In this video, we're going to talk about lines and their cousins, rays and line segments. So a line it continues indefinitely in both directions. And the way we distinguish that from rays and line segments is that we put arrows on each end of the line when we draw it. So if it's a line, it needs arrows. A ray has a starting point. So that is a fixed point. And then it continues indefinitely in the other direction. So if it's a half line or a ray, then it needs an end point or starting point, depending on how we look at it. And then it must continue in uh, forever in the other direction. And that has to be shown using an arrow. So if we don't have arrows, then it's what we call a line segment. It has a starting point and an ending point. It really doesn't matter which point we consider the starting point or the ending point in this class. If you stick with calculus to third semester calculus, then it will matter which point. In, uh, but for now, we just need to know that it, it ends at each point, uh, at each uh, end point of the line segment. So, and it's bounded, meaning that, you know, it stops there and it stops there at the other side. All right, so let's talk about slopes. Now you may think of slope as just being a formula, but we're going to think of it geometrically. What does it represent? Well, the slope is a number. It doesn't have a variable in it. It is just a number. And that number describes how steep the line or the line segment is. Now that number can be any number. It can be a positive number, it could be negative, it could be zero, it could be a fraction. It could be an irrational number. Square root of two could be the slope of a particular line. Or pi over four could be the slope of a particular line. So let's stop thinking about it as just a formula. It has a geometric interpretation. So it's positive if the line is going uphill as you go from left to right. And the steeper the line, the bigger the slope. So there's a lot of things that we can tell about the slope without having any numbers involved at all. No coordinate system no coordinates, no axes, just looking at it as a geometric object, we can say that, oh, okay, I have two lines here. Both of them are going uphill as we go from left to right. So both of them have a positive slope. And which one is going to have the larger slope? Well, whichever one is steeper. So the green line is steeper. It will have the larger slope. The blue line is less steep or flatter, so it's going to have the smaller slope. On the other hand, if you, as you move from left to right, if you go downhill, then the slope is negative. But you still have the same idea that the steeper the slope, I'm sorry, the steeper the line then the bigger the slope is. In this case, bigger in absolute value because algebraically a bigger negative number lies to the left of a smaller negative number. And so, but you get the idea. So which of these lines is gonna have the larger slope in absolute value? Well, the steeper line. So this line, for example, it may have a slope of negative four or negative five. And uh, this red line may have a slope of negative two thirds, something like that. If you have a horizontal line, 
that is a line that's completely flat, uh, then the slope is zero. So it's not steep at all. So then as it starts to uh, get steeper and steeper, the slope gets bigger and bigger until finally, if you have a vertical line, we say that it's so steep that there's no number that would describe the steepness. We say that the slope of a vertical line is undefined. All right, so let's do a little practice here based on what we just talked about. We wanna match each line with the given slope value. So we have six lines, we have six slope values. Now, many times when I give this type of question, people pull out a, a ruler and start measuring things and uh, you know, trying to calculate things or putting in axes. And really that's the wrong direction that's not what we want to do with this particular question. And we don't need to do it because what do we just learn? We learned about well, when is a slope negative? When is it positive? When is it zero? When is it undefined? So that's probably the first thing we can use to help answer this question. So the slopes of line A and line F are both negative. Slopes of line B and line E are positive. The slope of line C, well, C is a vertical line. So its slope will be undefined. And D is a horizontal line. So its slope is zero. So just from this information, I can match C and D with their corresponding slopes. I'll well, see its slope is undefined and D, uh, its slope is zero. So I've got those two matched up right away. And what about the remaining four? Well, there's only two lines that have a positive slope. And of course, I only have two slope values, which are positive. So now I only need to be able to distinguish between which one of these slope values goes with line E, which one goes with line B. Well, then I go back to the idea of the bigger the slope, the steeper the line, or the steeper the line, the bigger the slope. So B is not very steep, whereas E is a very steep line. So its slope should be the bigger value, which is three. And the slope corresponding to line B should be the smaller value, which is one fifth. All right, so that only leaves us with two lines. Those two lines have negative slopes and I only have two negative values for the slope. So again, I look at the steepness. So A is a much steeper line than F. So the negative 2.5 is going to correspond with the steeper line. The negative one third is going to correspond with the one that's not so steep. So now I've got all of the lines matched up and I never had to perform any calculation or look at any number at all, except for the values of the slopes. Now, many times uh, we're given a grid and um, asked to find the slope of a line or a line segment. And we don't really, again, need numbers or a coordinate system or take coordinates of points or use a complicated formula. We do need to use a formula. The formula is that the slope is the rise over the run. Now, in this video, unless otherwise noted, we're going to say that each grid line represents one 
unit. So normally I have to be careful. I have to look at the axes and verify that each grid line is one unit. Um, and if it's not, then I have to do something else or be more careful. But for these simple examples, and honestly, for many uh, of the questions that we encounter in our calculus class, um, each grid line represents one unit. And so we do have to think about uh, negative versus positive. If we are going to move upward, then we're concerned that we consider that a, a positive rise. And if we're moving down, that's a negative rise. And then for the run, if we're moving to the right, then we consider that positive. If we move to the left, that's negative. So how do we go about calculating the slope? Well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick two points on the line or line segment which are on grid corners. So it doesn't really matter which two points I pick. I happen to pick these two. There's really not very many others. I guess I could have picked this point. I could have picked this point. I could have picked this point. I guess there's quite a few. And I could have picked that point. But I picked two points. Next, I'm just going to count to find the uh, rise and the run. So starting with the rise, and I like to start with the rise because it goes on top. I can count that, oh, I'm going from the left point over to the right point. I need to go two units up, two grid lines And then I would find the run, again, counting. And just as a, as a reminder, we're assuming that each grid line represents one unit. So counting for the run, I would see that I'm moving for right. Now up and right, both of those mean positive. So I can just go ahead and write the slope as a fraction. So it would be the rise, which is positive two, over the run, which is positive four, and that'll simplify to one half. Let's do another example. Now, before I even begin, I should note that hmm, I'm going downhill with this line as I go from left to right. So I better come up with a negative value for the slope. So I need to pick a couple of points. So I picked these two. They're good because they lie on the grid corners. There's not, I guess there's this point over here and maybe where this arrow is on the far left. And I'm going to always go from left to right. It just makes um, uh, sense based on the way we read. So uh, there are some cases where it might be better to go from right to left, but uh, I'm going to go from left to right starting with the rise. So I've gone two down. Remembering down is going to wind up being a negative. And I'm going three to the right. So my slope is negative two thirds. Good. Negative value for the slope. That's what we expected based on the fact that we're going downhill as we go from left to right. Let's do two more examples. Uh, in the first pink or mauve colored line, I pick two points. I find that the rise is two up. The run is two right. So my slope is just going to be positive two over positive two, which equals one. For the blue line, I pick two points. My rise is six down. Again, I always go from left to right. So as I go from left to right, I'm going six down and then two units right. So my slope is negative six over positive two, which equals negative three. 
Let's do another matching exercise together here. Uh, I have a uh, graph here, which consists of line segments. There's no arrows grow on the end of either side. And these line segments have different slopes. So uh, in another video, we'll see that this could be the graph of a piecewise defined function. But for now, we're just going to look at it as a geometric object. And we're going to try to match up the slope values with each line segment. Now, there are six line segments, but there's more slope values. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So two of those slope values are not going to get matched with any. So uh, let's go ahead and work this out. So first of all, I can see that none of these line segments are horizontal. So I'm going to make a note that uh, there is no line segment that's going to have a slope of 0. So let's just cross that out so we do not get confused by it. All right, so uh, for line segment with the point A, uh, I've got negative 2 for the rise and positive 2 for the run. So this should be a negative 1. And good, so that's going to correspond with point A, slope of negative 1. We change colors. Uh, for the line segment with point B, again, the rise is negative 2. The run is positive 1. So the slope for that line segment should be negative 2. Good. For the line segment C, Notice that A, B, and C, they're all going to have negative slope values. Um, and, um, but I've got three negative slope values left here. So I really, I could probably say that because the line segment is so steep here, that probably the slope value is going to be negative four, the largest one of those. And you, there's not going to be any uh, line segment. Uh, well, F is negative two, so we've got to be careful about that. All right, so my slope, my rise for the line segment with C is negative four. My run is positive one. So my slope for line segment containing the point C is going to be negative four. All right, what about the line segment with D? Now, D and E both will have positive values. So I could maybe, let's see what my positive values are. I've got a 1 half and I've got a positive 4. So here I wouldn't even need to do any calculations because E is much steeper than D. But let's go ahead and do the calculations anyway. I know that E being steeper must correspond to the larger slope value. Let's just verify that. So with D, the rise is 1, positive 1, and the run is a positive 2. So my slope would be 1 over 2, 1 half. So that is the slope corresponding to the line segment with point D. Now let's look at this longest line segment containing point E. Here we have a rise of positive 4 and a run of positive 1. So um, that's good because the only positive value left is m equals 4 and that is 
exactly what the slope is for that line segment. And so now I've got two values left here, which are negative, and the line segment containing point F slopes downward or goes downhill from left to right. So that's good, but which one is the slope? Well, my rise is a negative three and my run is a positive two. So my slope is going to be negative three over two. That is the slope at the point F. So negative two thirds does not correspond to any of our line segments. So that's a good exercise. Now, in all of those exercises, uh, and it is the most common case where we have one grid line representing one unit, what if that is not the case, look at these two lines, the same two lines we saw before, but now I have put a set of axes and I've indicated the scale on each axis. So on the horizontal axis, one grid line represents five units. So I put 10 and 20, but there's two grid lines between those, meaning that each grid line represents five units. And on the vertical axis, each grid line is uh, two units. Now I can still use counting. I can still count the grid lines, but then I have to make a conversion to units. So with the leftmost line, the rise is three grid lines, but remembering that each grid line is two units on the vertical axis, that corresponds to six units. And then the run is three grid lines, but each grid line represents five units, so that's 15 units. So then my slope is going to be six over 15, which reduces to two over five. Now for the right line, the blue line, my rise is, well, eight grid lines down. As I go from left to right, I'm going down. So that'll give me a negative value for the rise. And since each grid line represents two units, that would be negative 16 units. For the run, I go two grid lines. Each one is five units. So I have a positive 10 units. So then my slope would be negative 16 over 10, which will reduce to negative eight over five. Now, when you start getting into these uh, strange uh, scales or unusual scales on the horizontal and vertical axis, you may want to at least check your work or just calculate the slope using our familiar formula, where we take y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So in our leftmost line, the two points that I chose have coordinates, so negative 15 comma 4, that's going to be my first point, so x sub 1 is negative 15, y sub 1 is positive 4. Just make a note of that. So this is my x sub 1. This is my y sub 1. And then my second point has coordinates 0 comma 10, so my x sub 2 is 0, my y sub 2 is 10. So again, the way I always look at it is the first point is the one on the left, and the second point is the one on the right. But using this formula, it really does not matter which one you uh, 
label as x sub 1, y sub 1, which one you label as x sub 2, y sub 2. In the end, it's going to give you the same ratio or the same slope. So I'm going to take 10 minus 4 on the top, 0 minus negative 15 on the bottom, and that gives me 6 over 15. So the same rise and run that I got by counting, which also reduces to 2 over 5. With the blue line, the two points that I had chosen have coordinates. Well, again, I'm going to use the leftmost line as x sub 1, y sub 1. And the one on the right it has x sub 2, y sub 2 for coordinates. And so to calculate the slope, what would I do? I would take the negative 4 minus 12. That would go on top and 30 minus 20 on the bottom. So working that out, that'll give me the same rise and run, negative 16 over positive 10, which simplifies to negative 8 over 5. All right, quick note on parallel and perpendicular lines. Parallel lines have the same slope. With perpendicular lines, I can see that the rise of this blue line is the same as the run of the red line. And the run of the blue line is the opposite. So the blue line has a positive run but the rise of the red line is negative. Again, I'm going from left to right here. And I could also see that, oh, okay, look, one of these lines, the red line is going downhill. The blue line is going uphill. So they definitely need to have uh, different signs. One is going to be a positive slope. One will have a negative slope. So the slopes of perpendicular lines are going to be negative reciprocals of each other. Uh, what does that mean? Well, that means that the uh, slope of the red line can be calculated as negative 1 over the slope of the blue line. Or, in other words, the product of these two slopes is going to be negative one. All right, quick note about equations of lines. Many times we're going to ask you to write down an equation of a line. And we use the word and because it doesn't make sense to say the equation of a line because there are really uh, infinite, infinitely many options of how to write down uh, an equation of a line. And uh, we have these four main forms that we like to use. And realistically, we only use the first two, but sometimes the bottom two uh, can be helpful. So we have the point slope form. So we need to know the slope. And for this particular line, we can see that each grid line represents one unit on both the horizontal and the vertical axis. So we can just count to find the slope being negative 2 over 3, so negative 2 thirds. And then if we know the coordinates of one point, say uh, this first point on the left is negative 3 comma 6, then I can go ahead and substitute those values into my point slope formula. And I get y minus 6 equals negative 2 thirds, then in parentheses, x plus 3. Do you need to simplify this? Well, it depends on the question. Sometimes with the question, you need to do some further work after writing down the equation. And in that case, 
it may help you to simplify this. But if the question says, write down an equation of the line, this is a fine equation. Now, it may help us to write it in a little bit more compact form, in the slope-intercept form, the y equals mx plus b, uh, is uh, a nice compact way of writing an equation of a line. Particularly in this case, we can look and see that b is going to be 4. So So then we get the nice short equation, y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 4. Now, a less common form, uh, but it does help us if we know both the x-intercept and the y-intercept. b is the y-coordinate of the y-intercept. a, in this case, is the x-coordinate of the x-intercept. And we can see that from just the graph. So then I could write. Uh, x over 6 plus y over 4 equals 1 as an equation of this line, very quickly from looking at the graph. And finally, we do have this standard form. Uh, we use uppercase a, b, and c here for standard form. And to write it in standard form, um, I could go from any of the previous equations. So I would probably need to use one of those previous ones. In this case, the easiest one to convert to standard form is actually the intercept form. I just need to multiply both sides of the equation by the least common denominator. And my denominators are 6 and 4. The least common denominator would be 12. So multiplying both sides, the entire equation, by 12 and simplifying, I get 2x plus 3y equals 12. Well, I hope this uh, refresher on lines and slopes will be useful for you, not only in this class, but in future classes as well.